Hello everyone, and welcome to the course Introduction to the Finite Element Method. My name is Clayton, and I'll be the one instructing you through this course. Now, this first little lecture, it's going to be nice, short, and sweet. It's just a brief introduction to what exactly is the Finite Element Method. As you guys are going to see, the Finite Element Method is kind of funny in that it is a source of great joy. If your model is working, you feel great. It feels absolutely amazing. But it's also a source of great depression. When your model's not working, well, it's probably the worst feeling you can have on Earth. And in this course, we aim to figure out why your model is working or why your model is not working. So again, in this little lecture here, we're just going to show you guys what exactly is the finite element method, as well as we're going to do a brief overview on the topics presented in this course. So let's start with the question, what is finite element analysis? Well, the best way to kind of show this is to start off with a simple example. Let's say we wanted to solve the problem x squared is equal to 2. Now you guys are saying, Clayton, what the hell? This is, of course, very easy. We know that the solution is going to be x is equal to the square root of 2. Well, it's easy to see that, but how can we program this into a computer, or how can we provide a numerical solution to this? Well, one way, of course, is to define a function, and instead of having x squared is equal to 2, we can move 2 to the left side, so we have x squared minus 2 is equal to 0. And since we know that our function is equal to 0, the solution of our problem is actually going to be the root of this problem. So if we look at our nice graph here and we were to plot x squared minus 2, we can see that the root of this is actually the square root of 2, which we know is the solution we are looking for. But again, it's easy to see the solution, but how can we make a numerical approximation? Well, one way is to say, well, we know x squared minus 2 is a nice continuous function. Therefore, we can perform a Taylor series expansion. So we know f of x0 plus h is simply f of x0 plus the partial derivative of f of x0 multiplied by h, and so on and so on. Now, when we're looking at numerical solutions, we can't go and so on and so on. We actually have to have a very clearly defined function. So let's say we neglect the higher order terms and only focus on those first two terms there. Therefore, I have a nice equation for f of x0 plus h. Now, luckily for us, and we look at our original problem, we said, well, we moved uh, the 2 to the other side. Therefore, we have x squared minus 2. So we know that f of x, well, we're actually looking for when this is equal to 0. And from there, we can actually do a little manipulation to this equation, and we could rearrange it for that value of h, where h is equal to negative f of x0 divided by f prime of x0. And you're saying, oh, hold on, Clayton, this looks a little bit too math heavy. I don't really know what's going on. Well, let's look at the graph. Basically, what we do is we take a value of x0, and we find the function value at that point, x0. From there, we can calculate h, which is simply the distance from x0 to our new point over here, and then we end up with the point of x0 plus h. As we can see from the figure here, that f of x, sorry, x0 plus h, it's a little bit away from the square root of 2, so therefore we have to figure out, okay, what can we do to make this approximation a little bit better? So to clearly illustrate this, let's look at our particular problem. We know that f of x is x squared minus 2, and we can easily take the derivative of f of x with respect to x to simply get 2x. Now what we're going to do is we're going to create a nice table here of all the parameters that we needed and discussed in the previous slide. So we have x0, of course, we have f of x0, f prime of x0, as well as h plus x0 plus h. Now if we look here, we say, okay, well, where exactly do we begin? Well, this is kind of the first thing of numerical analysis. We need to assume an initial value. Now, the key here is assume. And you know what they say about assume. It's, it's, it's not very nice, but of course, we have to do it. So let's just say that we assume x0 is equal to 1. Why not? We can pick 1. We can pick 2. It doesn't really matter what you pick. As you guys are going to see, we're going to get to our answer eventually. So if we assume x0 is equal to 1, well, then I can calculate f of x0. We just substitute 1 into the equation x squared minus 2. We get a value of negative 1. From there, we can also find the value of f prime of x0 by, again, just substituting 1 into the equation 2x. We simply get 2. From there, we can calculate h because h is simply negative f of x divided by f prime of x. We get 0 0.5 and we get x0 plus h as simply x0 plus h, <laughs> 1.5, nice and simple. You're saying, all right, well, what exactly does this look like? Well, if we look at our graph over here, 
we assumed a value of 1, which is, of course, to the left of the actual solution. And from there, well, we were able to find a value of h of 0.5. So that brought us to the right by a value of 0.5 and left us at 1.5. Now, as we can see, we went from the left side of the solution over to the right side. And we are a little bit off. So we know that the square root of 2 is 1.41 something, something, something. So we're closer to it, but we're not quite there yet. So what do we do? Well, we do another iteration. But this time what we do is we take the final value of our initial iteration and make that the starting value of our second iteration. So in this case, we ended up with 1.5. What we are going to do is we're going to say our new initial guess is 1.5. From there, we can repeat the same procedure, and we get x0 plus h as 1.417. So if we look at our graph over here, we basically went up and then to the left. And as we can see, we are starting to converge upon that answer of the square root of 2. Now, we say, well, you know what? I want it a little bit closer than that. So let's do another iteration. So we're going to take our final uh, answer from the previous iteration, make it our new initial guess. And from there, I get the value of 1.414, which is very, very close to the square root of 2. So therefore, we can see that our solution approaches the square root of 2. Now, the key here, which is going to be the key in FEA or numerical analysis, is our solution approaches that value. But our solution will never actually equal the square root of 2. It's impossible. Therefore, in FEA analysis, what we're going to see is that we want our solutions to approach the actual solution of the problem. But chances of chances of us getting the actual solution, it's very, very slim. Now, it is possible in some cases that you actually will end up with the exact solution, but it's very, very rare. The key here is we have to figure out, okay, how close can we get without trying to take a thousand iterations? Because right here I did three iterations. I got pretty reasonable accuracy, therefore I'm pretty happy. But how many iterations would it take to achieve the accuracy that you guys need? So these are some of the questions we're going to answer in FEA. Now, when we're talking about numerical analysis in FEA, it's actually very simple. Numerical analysis is the study of algorithms that use numerical approximations as opposed to symbolic manipulations for the problems of mathematical analysis. So I took this right from Wikipedia. It's very straightforward. Finite element analysis, on the other hand, is a numerical analysis method to find approximate solutions for displacements, stresses, and strains that satisfy the differential form of Newton's equations of motion. So one thing that I should emphasize here is when I'm talking about FEA analysis, I'm talking about it in relation to structures or components like that. So I'm talking about beams, I'm talking about bridges, I'm talking about concrete slabs, uh, steel plates, stuff like that. So if you guys are coming here for uh, the FEA of, let's say, temperature, eh, you're probably not going to see what you want. <laughs> you might want to find another video, but if you guys are looking for a, in sort of a structural aspect or a civil aspect, uh, hopefully this is the place for you. Now, when we look at this uh, quote here, the key here is approximate solutions. So remember that we are finding approximate solutions. We are not trying to find the exact solutions. How do we do this? Well, this is actually done by utilizing the weak formulation of the partial differential equations that are expressed in Newton's equations of motions. And as you're going to see in the course, we're going to take those very complex differential equations that has a solution that is either A, very, very difficult to obtain, or B, impossible to obtain, and we are actually going to linearize it. Therefore, we can solve it very nicely using our matrix operations. Now, quick little course outline just to end up this lecture. Topics covered in this course include A, a linear algebra review. And I know this is extremely boring. No one wants a linear algebra review. But unfortunately, if you guys want to understand some of the proofs that we do later on, a good understanding of linear algebra is going to be required. The second one is a solid mechanics review. So, of course, we are dealing with civil applications here. We deal with steel. We deal with concrete. We need to have some sort of stress-strain relationship between those types of materials. And, of course, everything that we learn in linear algebra is then going to be applied into our solid mechanics review. From there, we can actually get into the fun stuff. So the first one we're going to look at is typical approximation methods. This includes the method of virtual work or the Rayleigh-Ritz method, those methods that are very common however, very powerful to approximate things like uh, the deflection of beams, stuff like that. And from there, we're going to get even more fun with one dimensional finite element analysis. So everything that we learned in approximation methods, we're going to take it one step further and apply it to an actual finite element uh, type program. 
after 1D, well, then we move on to 2D and 3D. So it's going to be, again, even more fun. But as we're going to see in 2D and 3D, once we start getting into those higher dimensions, the calculations of some of the stiffnesses of the components that we're looking at is going to be quite complex and quite uh, computationally heavy. So what we're going to do after that is talk about isoparametric elements. And this is just a nice way of calculating the stiffnesses of those elements presented in topic 5, except it's less computationally heavy, and it's actually a very nice, easy formulation. From there, we're going to talk about the newton raphson method. This is a way of uh, obtaining solutions, just like we did in the previous slides here, except for a three-dimensional case of nonlinear matrices, stuff like that. After that, we're going to talk about some material models. So this would include uh, plasticity models, which are going to be very important moving forward. Of course, when we derive everything, we always assume things to be linear elastic, which is great on paper, but in, in real life, things don't really behave linear elastic. One uh, example would be concrete. We know that concrete cracks, therefore it creates a bit of a problem. After that, we're going to talk about some constraints and contact formulations in finite element method. And then we're going to wrap things off with instability. Now, one of the things I want to emphasize here is a lot of these calculations from theory become quite cumbersome. So once we enter the later half of the course, let's say topics uh, 8, 9, and 10, when we're talking about plasticity, contact, and stability, the formulations become quite computation, uh, not computationally heavy, but just difficult to understand. So when it comes to these ones, the best way to explain the finite element method is through an actual finite element program. So in this course, we're going to be using Abacus a lot. And with Abacus, I'm going to show you guys how to implement these plasticity models, how to implement constraints and contact, and how to solve for instability, stuff like that. So that's it for the first lecture, guys. I hope, uh, I hope you guys are as excited about this course as I am. We're going to have a lot of fun. All right, guys. Thank you guys so much for listening. I will see you guys in the next lecture.